This video covers the Add Devices mode in Audio Architect. Other topics are covered in subsequent videos. Terms and information from Audio Architect training videos covering earlier workflow stages will be referenced, so make sure you've seen those before starting this one. The term device will be used for any physical piece of gear in Audio Architect, a processor, an amplifier, or a powered speaker, for example. Click the Add Devices button in the Workflow Control group of the Offline Design Ribbon tab. You navigate in the venue the same as in Draw Venue mode with zoom controls and scroll bars. Below the venue is the Properties window. Any room, rack, or device clicked upon in the venue has properties displayed here. Any of these may be changed to meet your design and display needs. Just type in the data and hit Enter, or choose from a drop-down list. All data in the Properties window is changed in the same manner. High QNet addresses and names of racks, arrays, and devices may also be changed directly in the venue by double-clicking on the text and typing in the new name. Note that rack and array names must be unique within a single room, but they may be the same as those in a different room. The Devices window on the left of the main workspace contains an expandable list of Harman devices by brand. These HiQNet compatible Harman devices may be used in Audio Architect. There's the AKG Hub 4000, various BSS units, SoundWeb London processors, an extensive number of Crown amplifiers, DBX Drive Rack 4800 series, JBL VP and Vertec DP series powered speakers, and iOS devices such as an iPad to control your sound system with the Motion Control app. Following the same drag and drop paradigm as in Define Venue mode, the devices in the left window may be dragged and placed into the venue, or added from the venue by right click and choosing from a context menu. We're going to place devices in the venue to mirror where they will physically be located. The venue design is not just a representation of your sound system design, but also is a control and monitor interface. Rooms containing devices can be set to turn different colors to warn of errors for the devices placed inside them, automatically turning the venue design into a system monitoring interface. We'll cover that in detail in a later training video. Here I have created an example house of worship with labeled rooms. Enter the rack room by double-clicking it. Notice the tab of the venue shows the name of the room that you are viewing. Drag devices from the Devices window into the Rack Room, or add them from the Venue by right-click and choosing from a Context menu. Rack Mount devices are automatically placed into racks and arrayable devices into arrays. Continue to add devices from the left window to the Venue by left-click, drag, and drop until you have added all devices required to each equipment room in the Venue. To add multiple devices quickly and easily, right-click and drag from the Devices window. The white Venue button to the top left of the main workspace will return you to the Building Layout view. Devices may be added into a room from either view, the overall layout or inside of a room. Devices may be added to existing racks and arrays or dragged to an empty area of the room canvas to create new racks or arrays. Devices may be moved around the Venue to help create logical groupings for your design like floors of a building, racks for stage monitors, or front of house amps. Click and drag a rack or array to move it with your mouse. Devices may be moved individually into or out of racks. First select a rack or array, then select a device within it to select it. Note that the first click selects the rack or array, and the second click selects an individual device, which will highlight when selected. Multiple devices can be selected by holding Control, or shift. Double clicking on any device will open up a control panel to configure and control the individual device. But double clicking on a SoundWeb London device will open the dedicated SoundWeb London mode, which transforms the entire interface into a mode for SoundWeb London devices. This mode will look very familiar to existing London Architect users, and care has been taken to make operation as similar as possible. We'll discuss this mode in greater detail in a later training video. Copy and paste works the same for single devices or with multiple devices simultaneously. Just highlight the items you want to copy and right-click Copy and Paste. This can be very convenient if you're going to have similar duplicate systems in your design, 
like floors of a building or multiple buildings, Control c and Control v may also be used to copy and paste. Remember that when you copy a device, all settings and configuration inside of the device are also copied. This should help save a considerable amount of time during design and configuration, since most commercial sound system designs are relatively modular or scalable and use the same equipment. After copying and pasting this Crown Amp, I've opened the device panels for both the original and copied Crown Amplifier. And you can see the EQ is highlighted blue, which is a visual cue that it has been changed from its default state. And they both have the same EQ curve. DSP settings can be copied and pasted between channels inside of like devices from the options in the right-click context menus. Back up at the room view, you can see that the software is aware of which rooms contain devices. A device icon is placed automatically over each room as soon as one or more devices are added to it. During the process of designing a sound system in Audio Architect, the exchange of information between the user and software is creating not just a representation of the space, but also a visual monitor and control. At a glance, you can tell which rooms have devices and access them. Single left click on the device icon and a drop down list populates of all devices located in that room. The number preceding the name of the device is the HiQnet address.